Raising teenagers. It is a challenge. It is hard work. We become different parents with raising teenagers. No matter how many books we read, no matter how many lectures we go to, no matter who we speak with, any professional, the job of a parent in raising a teenager is hard work. In the process of raising our teenagers, we become different parents. And if we don't become different parents, we're not doing all the work. We're not doing the right kind of work because we need to change. Can't be the same person anymore. And we need to acquire better and different skills on how to raise our adolescents successfully. So I'm going to share with you 10 keys to parenting teenagers successfully. This is a collection of many people that I listen to, books that I read, so I can't really pinpoint where and what and exactly where, but I'm really grateful to share them with you because they have definitely helped me become a better parent and I hope it can help you as well. I heard of a parent who now the child is married, has children, but she told me that she woke up one morning and started making breakfast for her for her son. And she told me, I felt so ridiculous. And I said, why? She said, because he's married. He's already, he moved out. But I'm so used to him being in the house that when he was newly married, she woke up in the morning, she made breakfast. She's not used to him moving out, moving away from the house. And it's like a different mindset now. We have to just shift gears, a different mindset on how to parent successfully and differently. Teenagers can be parented successfully. Does it mean life is easy? No. Doesn't mean that every day we're going to have a fantastic relationship of mutual respect and love and no anger. No. Parenting teenagers is hard. Teenagers are going through a state of being a child to being an adult. They are learning so much about themselves. They're making so many mistakes. They are trying new things. And in order to parent them successfully, that means I'm trying to be the best parent I can be. I'm trying to give them the best tools I can, be the best support that I can. But nevertheless, even with all of these things, the teenager will have bumps in the road, will have struggles, will have challenges, but at least they are having the best support system. And I applaud you for watching this video, for trying your best, because you are doing your personal effort in being the best parent you can be. So here are the 10 strategies 10 skills for parenting teenagers successfully. Number one, giving your child respect. Everyone has intrinsic worth, intrinsic respect. The child doesn't need to behave a certain way in order for me to respect them. And yes, it's hard to respect them when they are being disrespectful. But in other words, if I'm being disrespected and my child is not respecting me and I fall into anger and resentment, and being upset, what happens is I'm I'm not their backbone anymore. I'm not their support system. I'm showing them that I'm not behaving in a way where I'm supportive, that I'm strong, that I'm stable. So when our children disrespect us, don't take it personally. They're going through a stage. Uh, they have a Yetzirah, an evil inclination. And at this time, it's ruling them. It's It's... They're falling into the trap. So we as adults are learning how to control ourselves, how to not have evil urges and desires and not to act impulsively. More, so much more than them. They're just learning how to be an adult. So when they beha behave impulsively, aggressively, with anger, learn not to take it personally. They're learning on how to navigate this world successfully. So let's not judge their actions by who they are. They, they are at Salam Elohim. They're worthy. They are pure 100%. Yes, they don't act that way all the time, but the way they act has nothing to do with who they are. They are worthy. They are have, have they have a Salam Elohim, a piece of Hashem. They're created in the image of Hashem, and they, that's why they deserve respect. Everybody deserves respect, but this is really geared towards our talk about teenagers. So let's not judge them for what they do. 
give them chances, give them that respect, treat them with respect no matter what. It doesn't mean you say, oh, honey, oh, sweetie, after they are being very disrespectful. But you're being calm, you're being composed, and you're that strong backbone. You're the adult. You're not the child. They're still the child no matter what. They are the child. They may say things or do things disrespectfully. They probably regret it because as long as you treat them with respect, they do regret it and they will show that in the future. Number two, let them make mistakes. Mistakes are part of life. Mistakes are part of the learning experience of life. This is how we learn. Sometimes we may feel that I, I just want to read all the books. I speak to lots of women and they always tell me very similar things. And I wish I could just listen to all these lectures or if I just sit down and just read this book, I will learn to be the best parent. The truth is, whatever tools we have now is, are the tools that we need to parent our kids. And yes, we need to continue learning and growing. However, just because you, you have the best tools and you're giving your child the best tools doesn't mean that they won't make mistakes because mistakes are part of life. Actually, the best way that we learn is by making mistakes. As a teacher, I learned this beautiful quote that where it says, Teaching is not telling students what to think. That's not successful teaching. It's telling the students how to think. So you're giving them the tools on how to make smart and right choices. But you're also letting go. You're also letting them make their own mistakes, make, make the right choices. Let them do it. You're giving them the tools on how to approach life, how to make the right choices. And then you're just letting go. Because the way they will learn is through their mistakes if they make them. And, um, how, and they will learn how to make good choices, but the experiences that they have is ultimately up to them and it's their choice. Number three, listen. Listen to them without making judgments. Let them say what's on their mind. We must remember the journey from a childhood to adulthood is a process, is a journey. And they're trying to find themselves. They're trying to find um, what they like, what they don't like, who they want to be. And we've been there at one point. We've been teenagers. Maybe it's been a while for some of us, but we have all been there. And at the end, I'm going to share with you a practical tip on how uh, we can better approach parenting teenagers. So we must listen to them without judgments, without correcting. Because, yes, we do have an, most of us have an image of how we want our, our children to be. Because we send them to certain schools, we want them to have certain friends, we want uh, them to have certain, you know, associate with certain neighbors, and we want our kids to be a certain way. However, we must know that listening to them is learning more about them. And if your child talks to you, and as they become teenagers, they talk to you even less, especially boys, they tend not to talk a lot. But if they're talking to you, just listen with a smile, without judgments. Without judgments, just be there for them. And you'll know their track of thought. Be a good listener without correcting them or judging them and um, telling them how to think. Number four, spend quality time. Spending quality time means it's consistent. Either it's every week, it's on your schedule, it's, it's you know, a certain amount of time, whether it's 15 minutes a week, 30 minutes a week, depending on your schedule, but it needs to be consistent needs to be on your schedule. It's better that they see it if they don't, you know, sometimes boys don't like that because they don't want to get embarrassed. Their friends, their neighbors will see it. I have mommy time. And sometimes your child does, wouldn't want you to, um, to tell them, now I'm spending time with you. So what you can do to children who you don't, uh, who don't like to hear, okay, I want to spend time with you, uh, especially boys, they do that. Um, what you can do is you can say, I'm feeling bored. Just use their line. Many kids always say that I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm feeling bored. And they'll say, well, I want to spend time. Let's do this together. And if they don't, just be around them. Just talk to them or just observe what they're doing and just smile. And it's hard, but you don't want to force yourself into spending time with your, your children if they don't want to spend time with you. Just be pleasant and have a better relationship. Maybe they don't want to spend time with a parent because the parent is always critical. And the child obviously doesn't like that. Nobody likes that. 
So maybe lessening how much criticism we give to our children is very, very important. Um, and I believe Sarah Hannah Radcliffe said the criticism should be nine to one, meaning nine compliments, one criticism, one correction. That's a lot of positive talk because children at this stage and age, they need positivity, they need strong encouragement and support. So spend quality time with your child doing what they want to do um, and make it positive, make it consistent. Number five is make their interests your interests. And I know this could be hard, but you could have them teach you something. Whether it's if you're not computer savvy and they are, have them teach you something. Maybe how to use Zoom, how to use a cool game, how to play it. Yes, we don't want to say it. I want to play video games with my child or play a computer game. And sometimes, I mean, this day and age, kids are different. They have different interests. You'd rather spend time doing things that your child wants to do with you for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Maybe it's not something you love to do. Let's say it's video games, but they love playing video games. So it's better that they play with you and share that experience. Of, if that's the only quality time that they want, it's better because they'll, they'll have something to reflect on. They have something to associate you with, not just being a parent and telling them what to do. So... Have them tell you something. Have them retell a story they're reading. Uh, teach you a Rubik's Cube if they're good at it or origami. Whatever that it is that they're good at, have them teach it to you. Because, you know, that shows a bond. That shows trust. That shows friendship. And that shows a connection with our children. Number six, get their advice. News. Got news brief. We don't know everything. Our sages teach us that a wise person learns from everyone. As parents, we know a lot. But the reason why we are their parents is because we need to grow as parents also. We need to be different. And we don't know everything. And get it's a good idea to get their advice. Maybe on what you should cook, where you should go. Maybe you're having trouble with a coworker and you don't know how to react or another difficult situation. You want to get their advice. What, what do they think? That shows them, hey, I care about what you think. Your thoughts matter to me. Get their feedback. Get their preferences. Where should we go on vacation? Where shouldn't we go? You know, what would you rather do? It doesn't mean you'll do everything that they say, but you care about how they feel and what they think. Number seven is be their friend. What do friends have? Friends have things in common. That's why we're friends. I like you, you like me, we're friends. We do similar things together. We like similar things. I like you for some reason. And it's a good idea to be a friend with your teenager and talk about yourself, especially parts in your life where you were confused as a teenager, where you made mistakes, or maybe as an adult. Because kids need to see, like, listen, yeah, I make mistakes too. Just because I'm a parent, I'm not perfect. But I'm going to admit to my mistakes and I'm going to be better. And especially when they see you becoming better at something that you're working on, it's like you're going to get so much respect and they're going to believe in themselves and not shut themselves down or beat themselves up uh, when they make mistakes. They, they won't shut down because they're like, this is part of life. My parents are working on themselves. This is part of life. And they won't give up on themselves. They won't shut down. They will feel more comfortable by sharing their own life mistakes as well. Okay, number eight. Number eight is very powerful. It's having less control. This is very, very hard, especially since your child, who was once a toddler, you knew what he did, who he was with, what he ate, how much sleep he had or didn't have. You knew every detail of his day. And now he's a teenager. You don't know who he's talking to. You don't know what he's doing. You know, what interests does he have? He doesn't talk much anymore. And there's just so much less control on your part. And it could feel so, you could feel so vulnerable. Like what, I, I like, I don't know what to believe in anymore. I don't know what to trust anymore. I don't know where he is, what he's doing. And that could make you feel um, nervous and anxious and worried. However, we must know to tap into our emuna muscles, our, 
our unwavering faith. What is that? We believe in Hashem. Hashem gave us a job to be a parent. Does that mean to be the, the perfect parent? No. It means to be the best parent you can be. It means to give your children what they need. What do your children need? Your children need a parent who gives them what they need. One of the things our children need is for us to let go. It's a saying, let go and let God. Let God take over. Let him take care of your child. You're giving the best tools. You can't be calling him constantly and finding out everything. And it's hard. It, it, it minimizes the child on, on trusting himself. And we have to say, we have to tell our child that, um, let them feel that we trust them, that we believe in them. There's less control. I don't need to know every single part of your day. I need to be trusting in myself that I did a great job as a parent. I did the best job that I could. And less control means I'm letting God take over. And he always has taken over. I just believe in my mind maybe that I was in control. But really, no. The child is exactly the way he was meant to be. You could have amazing parents. Parent, a child who's difficult. And you could say, what, what did you do wrong as a parent? Why do you have such a behavior, behavior child, behaviorally challenging child? And you could have parents who have no skills and have an easy kid. It doesn't mean you're a bad parent. That's uh, Many times we make that mistake. It just means this is your project. This child was giving these character traits for you to work with. And you can do it. You, you're the best parent for this job. No other parent can parent your child except the way you can successfully. So... It is important for us to know just to, you know, have less control on our children when it is appropriate as teenagers. It doesn't mean we don't know anything about them, but just less control, less questioning, uh, being a little bit more laid back, knowing that this is part of the process of them being an adult, that they just need to experience life, make mistakes, and try new things. And you're their backbone, you're their support, you're always going to be there for them. Let them feel that. Number nine. Number nine is forgive. As we mentioned before, we don't want to take what they say personally. We really don't want to do that. Sorry. We don't want to take what they say personally. At this time in their lives, they're saying and doing things that they don't mean many, many times. We want to be their backbone. We want to forgive them. They are learning how to navigate life as an adult successfully. And you were once there too. So learn to forgive them. Don't take everything they say personally. It doesn't mean you just let it go. But just don't let it penetrate You know, you as a parent. They'll say things, you're the worst mom or you're the worst dad. Or you never do this, you never little dad. And you control too much. Or They'll say that because that's how they feel. And it's important to probably hear that, have a conversation with them, but not every single time because they are just saying things many times. They're just trying to react from the Yitzhahara, the evil inclination. Once they feel upset, they act, they act upset. Once they feel angry, they act angry, frustrated, impatient. That's how they act. They'll say and do things that they uh, will later probably regret. And we want to say, this is not you. I know you seem upset. I know you seem tired, you look like you didn't have enough sleep, why don't we talk in a few minutes or in 10 minutes or after dinner? So it's important to let them know that you trust them, that you're their backbone, that you believe in them. And that's number 10, trust. You have to let them know that you trust them, that you are proud of their choices, that you believe in them, and you, you know that they will try to make the right decisions. Let them know that you believe in them and that you will love them no matter what. This security gives them the inner happiness and serenity to confidently live and explore life without being afraid of making mistakes, without being afraid of making poor choices. We need to be able to trust our children and let them know that we trust them. So my practical tip to you is take a few minutes, three to five minutes, Pretend as though sitting next to you is you as a teenager. And how are you talking? Now you're an adult. How are you talking to yourself as a teenager? 
Do you want to hear more words of love, more words of encouragement, more praise, life advice, support, loving words? What do you want to hear? Talk to yourself. And this is how we probably need to talk to our children. It's going to remind us, hey, I was also a teenager at one point. I also made mistakes. And I also wanted to explore life. I also was unsure about how to how to be. I want to be that loving, encouraging voice to my child, no matter what. So I hope these ideas were, are helpful to you, as they are definitely helpful to me. And God willing, we'll be able to parent our children, our teenagers, more successfully. Leah Bramov, being a becoming. Awakening awareness of your greatness and potential.